Hi everybody, Jill here again. Thank you so much for joining me. It's lovely to have your company and I'm hoping if you've got some lovely Lavinia stamps, you're going to have a bit of a crafty play with me and you're going to join in. Today, I thought I'd share this design with you or oh, something similar, you know what I'm like. Um, and really the main focus of this is these fabulous new Lavinia stamps. Tracy has just drawn the most amazing houses. And this one, if I'm not mistaken, is called Bumble Lodge. Now, there are various lodges and honestly, I, I can't wait. I'm going to record so many videos for you because I've just loved making samples with them. Now, I'm going to do a square card today because, as you know, I love these six by six. I buy ready-made cards and envelopes um, just because it's such a lovely size. But I do want to show you I've made a very similar design with a, a DL card and it's the same cottage, the same, um, I've used Pippin again, and just to show you how you can, same techniques, but just to show you how you can shake it up a bit. But as I say, we'll make this one today, but there's a bit of a, a thought for you. I mean, I love DL cards. This is actually going to a friend who's um, moving house. So this is ready for her. And these are ideal, again, new home card, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll start and I'm going to use the Lavinia watercolour card. Now, you know, I have a thing about this card and I've got to be honest, for me, it's the best watercolour card that I have tried. It's so smooth, so it's perfect for stamping on because that's the one thing that used to put me off um, card was if it had got a bit of a tooth to it. So this one is um, five and a half inches. I know you like the measurements in inches um, just because it's going on my, my six by six. But like I say, you can vary the design to whatever size card you would like. Now I'm going to start with my stamping and I'm using my VersaFine Claire, the Nocturne. And I'm going to come in with our main feature, which is Bumble Lodge. Now you'll have to excuse me. I do have to keep looking the names up because they are so new to us. And um, obviously my new Lavinia stamp acrylic block. So I'm just going to ink it up. Now again, the, the quality, the detail in these stamps is just amazing. So I'll give it a good, good inking. And again, as per me, I always get ink everywhere. So let's try and just wipe that off a bit. And I'm just going to, you know me, I have to, oh, look, we'll turn that over. Oh, I've got a little mark on that. <laughs> right, we're going to put it about there. Now, for me, you know me, I have to stamp on the side. It's just one of those things. But like I say, it's however it works for you. Some people can stamp that way, but that's just not the way my head and hands work. So, how have you been keeping? How are things going? I hope you're keeping well. We've had a bit of our younger son, Mikey, ended up getting COVID for the second time, bless him. He has epilepsy, so I'm sure it's just made him a bit vulnerable. Um, he's had both his jabs, he's 30, but he still got it for the second time. And then his fiance, who has diabetes, she was okay for a week and then she ended up with it, bless her. So, um, but they, they've just felt like flu. So they, they were luckily no hospital, nothing like that. So I'm sure that means the, the jabs are actually working. It was just, just a shame for them, but they're okay and back at work now. But I've sort of been doing the shopping, dropping it off at the door, you know, like you do. Keep messaging in to check they're okay. There we go. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Now, the only other one I'm going to stamp, I'm going to add my colour with my um, Element Sinks and water. Um, but so I'm going to add Pippin next before I do that. Now, I must say, although I'm using the watercolour card and I'm going to use my inks with water to paint on, I am not a watercolourist. Never have. I've never done any um, tutoring uh, or anything, actually proper watercolour. So please, if you are somebody out there, and I know some of you are lovely, proper uh, trained watercolour artists, please, I'm not 
and again there are lots of videos around with proper watercolour mine is just a crafter's take on it so um, I'm not professing um, that any of these techniques are mine or um, you know I'd hate you to think that I was trying to pretend I'm something I'm not I'm just a crafter who loves to actually use these inks and I find the element inks are perfect for adding water and for me I just get such a lovely effect and I can <laughs> in my head pretend I'm a, a watercolour artist so I'm just going to turn that over and give it a bit of a blot because obviously our Versafine Claire is a slower drying ink. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my Element Sinks pads. And what I try and do is in my head I choose a couple of colours. Well, I say a couple, I think I've got five here. And I'm going to stick to just using those five. Now I've gone for Sundance because in my head I'm thinking I want a, a sort of some yellow for the roof and also almost to look like a bit of the sun poking through the sky. So if we're doing sky, I've got Blue Lagoon. Then obviously we've got some grass area, so there's my olive. And then I want a bit of sort of readiness in the sky, so I'm going to bring in paprika and then a bit of brown in the land and it can just help me mix, so I'm going for henna. And then what I tend to do is I tend to put them on my mat like that. Now I'm not sure if you can get all of them in, I'm sorry if you can't, but all I'm going to do, and this is just the way my head works, what I do is just put them on my craft mat and then just put the ink at the side so I know which colour. And I'm not putting too much out because these inks go so far, they're so juicy. Um, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit tight, I've got to be honest. Um, I think us crafters, you know, we like to look after our products. There's no point wasting them. So... I don't know if you can see that. So I've got them all lined up here. And what I'm going to do with my spritzer bottle is just give them a bit of a spritz. And then also on my card, I'm just going to give that a bit of a spritz. And it's quite funny. I seem to have had, um, I think I've got either some ink or some brusher on here, but that's fine. It'll add to the background. I'm just going to bring in my inky binky. Just so I've got something to clean my brush on. I've got a brush that's in water and this is just a, a one inch flat brush I just find it easier although I do notice Tracy's got some lovely watercolour brushes and as I say the more I do this the more I'm thinking oh maybe if I got some actual watercolour brushes I might be able to pretend even more <laughs> I'm a watercolour artist so I'm just going to put some yellow there just check I'm in shot. I get carried away with what I'm doing. I'm likely to wander off. And that's just sort of some yellow, roughly where I want the sun peeping through. And then I'm going to come in with some blue and just put it. Now I'm sort of going to be careful around here, not too careful. And the same this side. And I'm roughly going to go to about there. Now, I'm not being too careful. This isn't a technique where, like I say, I'm not a, a proper watercolour, so I dare say I could do masking. I could, but this is almost my quick take on it. So I'm going to come in with a little bit more blue and just sort of, I'm dabbing it a little bit to make it look a bit more like sky. And I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to come in with my orangey colour. And again, I just almost dab in because I want it to look almost like that's where the sun is peeping through and we'll come back just with a bit of blue and it's almost a bit of a, a muddy blue but that's fine and then I want to just add some clouds so I'm going to scrunch my kitchen roll up and then just blot some of that and try and get almost like a, a cloud shape and just blot some of that water off now if it's too dry what you can do is get your brush so say here add a bit of water and then blot it again and you see how it lightens it so we're almost full bleaching with our water and just we want it to look like we've got some clouds in there 
and I love the way the water if I don't like the if it's too much of a sort of a perfect edge between the colours what I do is I just blot some water on it and you see how it bleeds if I just bring that a bit closer can you see how they start to bleed and for me it almost does the job for me it makes it look that feathery sky and I've got to be honest, one little tip, if you're very close with your work and you don't like the way it's looking, just stand back a bit. Well, it works for me anyway. <laughs> Maybe that says something that my work looks better when I stand back. Maybe if I close one eye, it'll look even, even more better. Is that a word, more better? Oh, that's probably very poor English. Maybe I'll edit that bit out. If only I edited my videos. They'd be professional then, wouldn't they? What I'm doing now while I'm talking is literally just messing. I'm just adding odd little bits where I think it'd just look nice. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water. And the beauty of this card is you can literally add so much water. Now, I like that because it almost looks like, you know, those days um, when you look at the sky and you get those rain clouds that look like they're coming down. Right, I'm going to leave that. I'm happy with that. I just want a bit of grass now, a bit of land. So we'll come in with our green and we'll just, again, I'm not being particularly careful and I'm thinking sort of a bit like an edge like that. I'm just going to go right over Pippin. He's perfect. He's a silhouette. He'll be happy with that. And then come in with the brown and just put the brown right across the bottom, under Pippin's bottom, and we'll just do a bit of those there. And then I'm going to come in with my lighter brush and then just do a little bit more brown here. Just a bit more here. And what I'm going to do just with my green is almost, I'm, I don't want anything too definite. I just want to, when it dries, it'll just give that idea that there's almost something there. Just adds a bit of interest in the background. And if I want to tighten up any of these areas here, I can just bit of brown with the green. And there we go. Again, just gives that added interest that there's something there. And again, when we get this feather in here, I'm, I'm happy with that. I like that. So basically, I'm, I'm liking that. But what I'm thinking with the sky is let's just come in with the fan brush. Again, it's in my water pot. And I'm just going to add some little flecks of water just to add a little bit more faux bleaching and it'll just add a little bit more of interest to the sky. Now I'm just going to bring my heat tool. I'm going to paint this now and I'm going to paint with the ink that I've got on my mat. So I'm just going to dry that little area just to give me a head start. Now what I will do as well is just dry this under here. just so that that's a little bit. I mean, obviously at home, you can take a lot more time than this. Now, I just want to add a little bit more yellow and I've gone for it a clean bit of my mat. I don't want to add it to where the water is because I don't want to add any water and contaminate my ink. And I'm going to paint, just again, check you can see. I'm just gonna add some paint and I keep stressing this, you will take longer. I mean, I've gone over that there um, only because you know you don't want to see me painting for hours do you but I have to say for me at home this is is the best bit literally I just lose myself with the painting you know and if I've had a, a stressful day or I'm feeling a bit fed up I mean we all get those days don't we I must admit sometimes you know I do I just feel you know for no reason just maybe a bit fed up but just doing a, a little bit of painting and it, it really makes me feel so much better. So like I say, I'm doing it quite quick. You will take a lot longer. Now I think my brown's down here. Let's see, yeah. So we'll paint our little cottage brown. Lodge, I need to call it lodge, keep calling it cottage. Now what I'm going to do with the brown is just mix a little bit in with my yellow and then that'll give me a bit of shade under here. So under this lovely twisting 
I don't know if it's a vine, I wonder what it is. So we'd get shadow under there, wouldn't we? But also we've got our sun here, so we'd have shadow on this side. So let's just add a bit, just to add a, a bit of depth. Tracy's got some shading at the base here, so that means we've got shadow there as well. And can you see already, it's just building up a bit 3D, really, for doing very little. So if I come in with the brown under here, my thatch is overhanging, isn't it? So that would be more shadow. We've already said we're going to have shadow down this side. So that's building up nicely. And then what about the, the rocks here? If I add some of my blue to the brown... That'll just darken that brown, give it a bluish tinge and give me a bit more of a shadow for the rocks. I think I just want a bit more blue. Again, just a little bit more. I think I'll just go to a narrower paintbrush. So some blue with some brown. Oh, that's better. Just want to bring in that bluish tinge just to darken that colour with the rocks and a bit more with that shade there. Just wasn't standing out enough for me. I mean, I, I could have got my grey ink, but I quite like to just sort of mix the colours I've got. It just keeps it all sort of tonal then. And we'll just add a bit more shadow, look, with this sort of greyy colour. We'll add a path here. And again, I mean, I'm just, just playing. But I love to do that thing of almost, this is a little story in my head. And let's have a blue door to bring in the blue in the sky. And it's lovely because when you paint, you still keep the detail that Trace is drawn in the stamp which I like that, and I really love the way that brings that blue. I want to put some yellow around there, so I'd better just clean my brush. Otherwise, I'll get green, won't I? So let's see if we've got any yellow left. See if we can just add that yellow. There we go. And maybe we could add a, a bit of yellow down this side for our highlight. And then... Maybe just on the top of these rocks here, we can add a bit of yellow. Right, well, I think that's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that with my watercolour painting. I think what I'll do is just bring in a little bit more of brown, just to almost, because that's run so nicely. Let's just make it look a bit deeper so there really is something, something there. And let's just go deeper. Into the side there. Yeah, right, stop messing. I'm happy with that. So I will clean up this, which is sacrilege, because really, if you're going to do this, it would be good to do two, paint two or three um, backgrounds. And I'm just going to move my inks to the side and just clean this up. Because you know me, again, it's got to be a, a cleaner area to work on. And just wipe my hands. The um, Elements ink pads are so juicy. Oh, one of the ones isn't on properly there. They are so juicy that um, you, the ink is really concentrated. So I'm afraid, you know me, I like to try and keep clean hands. Sometimes I wish I could be one of these people that just was happy with dirty hands, but it's just not me. And sometimes I think if it's not you, it's not you, is it? So I'm just going to dry this a little. Now at home, what I would do is go and make myself a nice coffee. And by the time I come back, because it is better if it dries naturally. Now I'm lifting my card up because it will dry quicker rather than against the mat. The warm air will just go through. Like I say, at home, just I'd go off, get myself a coffee, nice cheeky biscuit. And um, by the time I've had that, it would be ready. But obviously, you don't want to wait, do you? So we'll just give it a quick. And while that's just drying off, 
So we've got some lovely more stamps that we can use. I'm just going to flatten it a little. Now the next lot of stamps that we'll use will come in with our foliage at the bottom, I think. And I have to say, you know I have a thing about poppies. So we've got this gorgeous garden poppy now, which is just delightful. And it's lovely and tall. And I've got a couple of demos ready to come back and show you this. But I'm thinking it's just going to look beautiful here. I need to include it, I really do. So I'm going to go in with black just to keep because I've got the silhouette theme and I'm just going to put it coming off the page slightly here. Again, I'm just stamping sideways because it's easier for me. And with this being a silhouette and obviously my card isn't quite dry, so I just want to let that ink soak in. There we go. How beautiful is that? And then what we'll do next is we've got some gorgeous silhouette foliage and one of the what stamps that goes with it is a silhouette grass which again is very useful to go along the bottom edge of cards but I'm thinking I'm just going to go with this foliage. Now this to me is very much like the, um, is it the wild flowers but a smaller version so again I'm thinking I can use these two in conjunction. And I love the base of this. You know, that edge, again, it's like, is it the buttercup one we used the other week? So for me, it's just a win-win, this. Absolutely beautiful. So let's have a look. Let's have some of this coming over. Stamp over that. And again, it's on my new look, my Lavinia acrylic block. Yeah, I'm going to turn it round just so we can see now. I think we can possibly get another foolish one there and then we want one at this side and then we'll fill in with some first and second generation I think that will look nice and then let's just have I'm gonna to have to turn it that way sorry if it messes with your head I do apologize We'll just have some of these little ends, first and second generation. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Stray sneeze. Now, I don't know where that came from. How dare it? So for those of you who just shouted, bless you. Thank you very much. What am I like if I'm not coughing, sneezing? It always happens when you go to do something live. Oh, there we go. That's enough. I don't want to add too many. I don't want too much round here because I want to see the detail of this stamp. But I love that. I think it works really well at the base of the poppy. So happy with that one. So I'll give that one a wipe. And then at the top... Originally, I was thinking of putting some foliage here, but then we've got some new fairy charms. And again, these are just delightful. Now, we've got one with um, the heart on and one with this lovely, I'm not sure, it looks like um, almost like a bluebell, a harebell. So if I turn my work that way, we'll stamp this one first. And these are going to be so useful. So you'll be able to have them coming from the side of your card. You can maybe stamp a sentiment on it. I want mine hanging down. But as I say, there'll be so many possibilities for these. And I think the heart one will be fabulous for, you know, lovely, clean and simple anniversary cards, wedding cards. Again, it's going to be just such a lovely little set that you'll suddenly end up using so much. Those little worker ones that we tend to use again and again. We'll have that one there. And then we'll come in. We'll go for the heart. So there's three in the set. I'm just going to use two of them. 
again mix and match them and I'm thinking little one there and as always I'm that busy talking I've not been concentrating on my spacing so let's just put a bit more ink on that so we need one in there don't we do we what we, that will be like that that will be no, it's got to be up there, hasn't it? Oh, I know. There. And then we can put... It's all about how it looks. Again, if you're struggling, use your acetate. I'm thinking that one there. Yep, I'm going to leave it like that. I think if I put another one there, it'll be too much. But like I say, if you struggle, just get your acetate and put it down and have a look. But that's that's perfect for me. Now, while I've got that on my card, I'm going to put my Sharpie line round. She says, where have I put my... So, I could come in with ink, but I don't want to overpower this by adding um, any ink. So, I'm just going to come round just to have that lovely fine black edge. There we go. And that will just help. Do you know what? Talk about live. Uh, I've just dropped the lid on the floor. Do you know what? You take your life in your hands when you come in my craft room with you. You don't, you? What am I like today? Do you ever have days like this? I bet you do, don't you? Tell me you do. Tell me it's not just me. You know, when for some reason your hands just don't seem to do what you want them to do. So you could leave that like it is, but you know we like our finishing off details, don't we? So just to finish off, let's bring in, I've got some of our chalk pastel pencils. Now with these, you can add as little or as much as you want. Now I'm thinking where I've got this lovely detail here, if I use these, just look how it will build up. And I'm just using feathery strokes. And just look how, now for me, that has just built up that depth. So if I do that on this, now again, at home, I would take a lot more time to do this. But once again, Tracy's shown us where we'd have, we've got those lines. And again, I'm just going to smudge it. Now, really, I should have a piece of kitchen roll so that I don't put dirty finger marks just in case I've got any of that ink and I'm being mindful this side would have more of the shade because again we've got our sun over there haven't we but this is a nice easy way I do love the way the chalk pastel pencils work so well over the inks and if, say, you have difficulty painting, detailing and shadow, for me, I find these just give me that way of adding extra shadow and bringing things to life a bit more. So extra depth on all these stones, look. And all of a sudden, I mean, for me, if I just do one side, look, and I'm going to put some yellow to give a bit of highlight at the top. And then I'm going to come in with my black and just underneath that doorway just smudge that so if i bring that to the camera hopefully can you see for me there's a big difference between the stones at this side and the stones at that side so what i'll do now is work on these so we've got them both the same and i'm just putting the brown at the base and a little bit of yellow at the top for that highlight and then some black just underneath and then I'm just giving it a bit of a rub and what the rubbing does is it will almost blend the colours a little but also it seals them because after all they are a pastel so you don't need to use a, a spray sealant or anything and I'm just going to add some more yellow to this side a bit more yellow 
again just for that vibrancy now if you wanted to pick out a few more of the detail of these lovely little bricks look you could spend more time and add as much detail as you wanted i just think it's such a lovely thing to do so we'll bring in a bit more shadow to pip in there now for his highlights you know me me and the white gel pen don't really get on so I am just using my chalk pastel. Just for me, it's more forgiving. Now, if you're one of these people who is really good with the gel pen, and I know a lot of you are, but again, we play to our strengths. The gel pen just doesn't do it for me. So I'm just using my, my pastel pencil. And I'm just going to come in and just add a little bit of shadow just down this side. And again, they're just little finishing tricks. But also, if you've got a little gap with your, with your um, watercolour painting, you can just fill that in, look. Again, give it a bit of a smudge. So the poppy will add a little bit of red here. I'm going for red poppies. I'm just thinking it goes nicer with that red in the sky. And I know the centre of the poppies... Um, I'm going for black for this one. I don't want to add it complete. I don't want to obliterate it. That's nice. And then just with my white pencil, just going to add a little bit. Just blend that out. Right. And then let's come in with our gold. Now these um signal pens are absolutely fabulous for just adding now again i could add white highlights but i'm going to use my gold and i'm just going to come down this side and in this instant i'll add a few on here just a few and then i'm going to go on these lovely flowers and Maybe we'll just add some down. Oh, these beautiful, look at these. You can see me using these so much. I think you know sometimes, don't you, when you get stamps that they're going to be the ones that are going to be on your desk and you're going to be using them a lot. It's funny how we all have different stamps that we sort of naturally progress to. In mind, it's always been the florals. I mean, I love using all of them, but you just have some. It's like colours, isn't it? We all have colours that we naturally progress to. Now, I have to say, I think that's looking, for me, I think that's looking lovely. We'll just add a little bit of the white chalk, I think, just in the middle, make, almost just try and give that a bit more shape. Yep, yeah, I think that catches the light lovely. So the last thing I'm going to do on that, now you could add some glitter, I'm not going to add glitter today just because if I can just I'm not sure whether you can see that for me I just think the um glit you can see the pen so that's enough for me without adding adding the glitter what I am going to do though is bring in some Posca I need some Posca flicks so I'm just going to cover Pippin up because I don't want any on him but I'm happy to have it everywhere else so just a few. Now, again, if you're somebody who doesn't like the Posca flicks, leave them off. I mean, that's the beauty of having stamps and products like we have. We just create our own designs. We see the inspiration from other people and we take as much or as little out of it as we want. And I just love the little, the white flicks on there for me. I like that, but it's totally up to you. If you're not into those, leave them off. Now, as always, what I'll do is I'll bring in my finished card and I'll open it up. Oh, look, finger marks on the back. How often do we do that? There we go. So there's the one we've created today and the one that I created earlier. As I say, for me, and I'm thinking, dare I say that, that Christmas word, how fabulous. Just turn that into a Christmas card. Some snow. Oh, yeah. See, that's going to be the next one. That's just going to be such a lovely Christmas card, isn't it? 
So I hope you've enjoyed that today. I hope it gives you some inspiration. Absolutely fabulous new stamps. I hope you enjoy them. You take care, everybody. Thanks for all your lovely comments and thanks for your friendship on here. It means so much. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.